Michigan-based battery company, Our Next Energy, say that they have lithium-ion phosphate batteries, which are the latest generation with an additional incredible increase in energy density. Now, I'm not sure if these claims are true. They haven't really been independently verified, but if they are, and they very well could be, this is the battery pack, in my opinion, that Ford and General Motors should be using as soon as they can. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. My name's Sam Evans, and you're watching The Electric Viking. Now, this battery company is based in Michigan. They're in the US. They will qualify for the EV battery incentives, not only for that, but for energy storage incentives, for a range of incentives. And they have some interesting batteries. Now, one of their most interesting claims is their dual battery. They say they have a battery which has two different types of chemistry. It's called the Gemini battery, and it has a 185 kilowatt hour pack size, but it claims to offer 600 plus miles of range in an electric car. Now, this is obviously not the battery that this video is about, but it is quite a fascinating little story. I thought I'd leave with you and to just let me know what you think about this. This is a lithium iron phosphate next generation battery, and it has an anode free battery attached to it. They call it a doubling range safely battery. They say that its dual chemistry architecture contains two cells using two different battery chemistries, each doing what they do best. So one part of the battery is LFP, and they say the LFP is for daily driving. The cell powers the motor and meets the demands of daily driving. Gemini's LFP cell delivers 441 watts per liter, which produces a range of 150 miles on a charge, more than enough to power 99% of trips. So they're saying it's sort of like, almost like a plug-in hybrid, but it's not gasoline powered. Basically they're saying the LFP version has 150 miles of range or the LFP section of the pack. The other section is the anode free battery section, which obviously has a lot shorter cell life, meaning you're not going to get anywhere near as many charges out of that part of the battery as you are out of the LFP part. So the idea is you wouldn't re you would really use the non LFP part of the battery. That's a fascinating concept. No one else has actually done anything like this that I'm aware of anyway. And I think it's a really, really good idea. They say that after 150 miles, the battery switches to the anode free cell, using it to charge the LFP cell with an energy density of 1007 watts per liter. The anode free cell provides an additional 450 miles of charge. Combined, the two cells will be one of the longest range EV packs on the market, delivering more than 600 miles on a single charge. Now, these are not LMFP batteries. They're not M3P battery cells. There's no manganese used in these batteries, but I can't tell what the battery chemistry is of the non-LFP. They just say non-anode battery. They don't say whether the chemistry is LFP as well, but no anode, they don't say. So I can't really confirm what that means, but they do say the battery uses 20% less lithium, 60% less graphite, 75% less nickel and 100% less cobalt. That's a graphic on their website. I'm assuming that then means that the non-LFP section of the battery is in fact an NCA chemistry, which uses a small amount of graphite and a small amount of nickel, but no cobalt and, and no phosphate. However, the real innovation here from this company is the ability that they say that their lithium ion phosphate battery is, 100 kilowatt hour LFP battery to give EVs 350 miles of range. It's an affordable battery pack that offers plenty of range. And that's about the same kind of range we're seeing out of lithium ternary packs or, or NCA, so nickel, cobalt, aluminium battery packs, which obviously are the two options. So you've got LFP, NCA, and really they're fighting against each other. LFP generally have lower energy, energy density. However, this American battery company is saying, not anymore. My, in my opinion, this is the kind of battery you want in your EV. There's really no reason to want an NCA battery unless it has higher energy density. If it doesn't, what is the point? There is none. Now, the company has hit its goal of 350 mile range on a typical EV using its Aries 2 LFP battery designed for passenger vehicles. The range boost is a big increase because it's gone up from 250 miles in the previous generation of the Aries battery. 
and it makes the battery comparable with most nickel manganese cobalt batteries that power EVs from companies such as Hyundai, Kia, etc. The CEO said at an Automotive Press Association event at our next energy's headquarters recently that NMC cells have been popular among automakers and battery suppliers because they typically have longer range. However, nickel and cobalt are expensive and difficult to source. Those batteries don't last as long. You can't charge to 100% without getting significant battery degradation over a long course of time. And in addition, iron is widely available and costs a lot less. He said, their LFP cell is 25% less expensive to manufacture than comparable NMC batteries. That's a huge difference. I mean, half the cost of the car for the manufacturer is the battery. If you can reduce the cost of that half of the car by 25%, that means you're essentially cutting the cost of the car down by around 12.5%. That's an enormous figure. And if you can make these in the US at these kind of prices that they're suggesting they will be, I really think using the phrase game changer to describe this product is not an understatement. There's so many advantages of LFP batteries that I've gone on and on about in all my other videos on this channel. I'm sure you don't wanna hear those again because I keep going on about them. So the fact that this is an LFP battery with no energy density penalties and the fact that it's made in the US already meant it qualifies for the battery incentives mean this currently would be the most affordable, realistic option for manufacturers in the US to use if they know if they're smart and if they're doing what I think would be the most logical decision. Now, keep in mind, the recalls is a big issue here. Recalls for LFP-based chemistry batteries are very low in comparison to those for nickel, cobalt, manganese-based chemistry batteries. That would be a big saving. I mean, have a look at what happened to General Motors. It cost them more than a billion dollars and massive PR problems, huge amount of stress, damage to the company after they had to recall the Chevy Bolt and the Bolt EV. I mean, one of them just set fire to itself last week and more questions were asked about the batteries that General Motors are using. They had been using LFP battery cells, which are what it used in all Tesla standard range vehicles. They may have been up, very likely would have avoided having all of that debacle and paying those, I think it was about $1.4 billion in costs. Not to mention, they had to shut down their factory for around eight months to make a whole bunch of changes and pay their staff during that period of time anyway. However, there is one drawback. Our next energy, known as One, said it has also reduced the weight of its battery to within 6%. So it is about 6% heavier than an NMC battery. However, LFP batteries are usually around about 15% heavier or depending on the size of the battery, up to 265 pounds heavier, say for an equivalent 100 kilowatt hour battery. So if it's only 6% heavier, there's really no drawback. Keep in mind, you can charge this to 100%. Uh, you're not gonna do that with your, your NMC powered battery pack, uh, your NCA powered battery pack, unless you have to. So in everyday use, you're gonna get more range out of this battery than what it actually sounds like if you're comparing like for like. So if you're comparing a 350 mile battery from NCA chemistry, then daily use, average use, you'll get more range out of this battery pack. Plus, having a weight penalty of only 6% is very, very small. It's negligible. So here the key is the supply chain. One will begin producing batteries for commercial vehicles and battery storage late next year at their plant in Michigan. They plan to launch the Ares 2 for passenger vehicles in 2025, followed by the hybrid 600 mile range Gemini battery in 2026, the one I talked about at the start of this video. The company expects its batteries to comply with the Inflation Reduction Act, making the buyers of these vehicles eligible for $7,500 full tax credit. So that's a big difference. Plus Aries gets, gets a payment as well from the government themselves to help, this will help them kind of fund their growth, fund their expansion. Our next energy will build the Aries 2 at a second plant They've said, however, they haven't said where that plant is. The company is in discussions with suppliers to co-locate on new sites to localize the battery supply chain. Iron and manganese were obvious battery material choices for the company when it was founded in 2020 because they can be mined and processed in North America. That's something worth considering. What is your supply chain? 
How much does it cost you to get the materials you need for the batteries? Well, they figure that part out. The industry is about to birth an entire supply chain in North America, said the CEO. To me, it would be ideal for the supply chain in North America with the right materials. And they seem to happen to have those. One and BMW partnered last year on the long range Gemini battery to power the BMW iX. The company is in discussions with other automakers for the Aries 2 battery, they said. We can help automotive companies achieve the same range that they're getting today, avoiding those risks and coming in at a lower price. And then we can offer a way to double their range. As we go after 600 miles of range with the hybrid battery, we are uniquely differentiated in that offering right now. Well, there's been a, an IPO recently, a SPAC, for VinFast. I think it's very, very difficult to justify the fact that VinFast are worth, what, $80 billion, and this company is worth one. That is insane. If you're going to invest in any company, this would be the one I would be doing right now. I think this company is going a long way. Obviously, BMW thinks it as well. I'm, I'm pretty confident other automakers are going to see what they're doing and say, yeah, we want a piece of that. Frankly, I, it does surprise me. I really don't understand why companies like uh, Hyundai, Honda, General Motors, Ford, and a number of others have decided on joint venture partnerships with Korean battery manufacturers and you know other battery manufacturers that are producing ternary battery cells. To me, it would be much more logical to have a joint partnership with this company. And I'm, I'm not really sure why that hasn't happened yet. Maybe there's something I'm missing. Maybe there's something that, you know, maybe this battery isn't quite what they're saying it is, or maybe it is. We'll wait and see. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching.